Let's take a look now at that last rule. It's not really a rule, but when we talked about those placeholder zeros for large numbers, trailing zeros before an implied decimal. We have an example. I have an example here. So I have 32,000. And that's, you guys probably would tell me, if I asked you where the decimal is, you would tell me the decimal, well, goodness, Mrs. Snipes, it's right there. And my convention then would be to go ahead and put little dots around that saying that it was actually implied. I put it there, but it was implied before. So there's my implied decimal. So these are zeros before an implied decimal. So counting sig figs, we know that these two digits are significant. So we know we have at least two significant figures. And in fact, if our uncertainty, see if this makes sense to you, if we, our uncertainty begins with, uh, what is that, the 1,000s place, we have plus or minus 1,000, okay? So does that make sense? So that would be two significant figures. Well, what if instead we have plus or minus 100? Well, if that's the case, then actually they're saying that this number is uncertain and these are certain. So if the uncertainty begins here in the 100s place, then we actually have three significant figures. What if it's plus or minus 10? Well, that means all the way out to here, and my thing's getting all messed up, but all the way out to here, that's where the uncertainty begins. So we can go ahead and keep one uncertain digits. This is uh, certain because it's between two and a, um, uh, a significant figure. So that would give us, what, four significant figures. Last but not least, we could have plus or minus one. And if it's plus or minus one, that means that actually everything is certain up until that last digit. We can keep one uncertain digit. So we're going to keep that. We'll keep the two zeros before it, plus the three and the two. That gives me five significant figures. So we're not sure, actually, when somebody gives us this, what the deal is. The word ambiguous means, I don't know, okay, so it's a little bit ambiguous. Um, there's a few ways we can get around that. So, so for, uh, uh, before I show you the ways to get around it, let me just tell you that if you're faced with that number, we the word is conservative. I'm going to use the conser word conservative later on here, too. We are conservative. If you see 32,000 and the decimal's not put there, okay, then that means that it is, we just go with two significant figures, okay. Um, now, if we go ahead, and I'm reading my slide again, if we go ahead and put 32,000, and instead of implying the decimal, if we put the decimal, okay, if we accepted that if the decimal place is shown, not implied but shown, that makes these digits significant because like it says, we're going with plus or minus one units. Okay, so what, five? So that's kind of how that goes. Don't put a decimal and you don't count those trailing zeros before an implied de uh, decimal. If you do put a decimal, then you do count those as significant figures. Let's see. So, oh, sorry. So in my example, in your notes, all it says is, um, now if we put the decimal, that makes it five significant figures. Put my little check marks here. One, two, three, four, five. Without the decimal, it's two. And I must have a sheet coming up to kind of tell you that. It's common, common that you're conservative if there's no decimal. So I kind of got ahead of myself. <laughs> but this slide is saying is the 32,000 without a decimal, implied decimal, but without a hardcore decimal, that's only two significant figures.